Hey guys, Reef Spy here. Today I wanted to do a review on the HANA Instruments Phosphate Checker. Uh, what I have here in front of me is the box that the uh, HANA Phosphate Checker comes in. And this is the model of the unit that I will be reviewing today. Okay, so when you do order one of these, um, it comes in this cardboard sleeve, which you can remove. And inside you will find um, a nice plastic card case uh, for your uh, tester. So let's go ahead and open this up and see what we get. So inside of the case, um, you will notice that we get the tool itself. This is the phosphate checker. You will get two glass testing vials. They also do provide um, some uh, reagent for doing the tests. I forget how many they give you with the kit, uh, but you can purchase more reagents separately. And this is a box of 25 that I purchased, which I'll be using after those are used up. And they will give you um, an instruction card. Let's see here. And you can see all of the information on how it works and the procedure for performing your tests. Um, one thing which I will mention uh, is right here, this battery management section. Uh, if you notice on there, it says that the device will shut down after three minutes of non-use and two minutes um, after the measurement is displayed. Uh, I didn't realize this at first, and you know, your first time through, you may be, uh, you know, very carefully reading these directions and taking your time to do things. Uh, and what can happen is, if you're not conscious of the time, uh, the unit can shut itself off, and you basically will lose your readings. Um, so if you're not paying attention, you could finish the test, walk away, come back, and the thing is off, and you've basically <laughs> missed your reading. So uh, definitely pay attention to the time when you're doing this. And they also give you this yellow card, which is basically um, a quick reference guide. So it's uh, information which is also included in the instruction booklet, but this one is laminated. So to protect it from getting wet. Uh, one thing that it doesn't come with, which I might suggest, um, if you have just a little pipette, it makes it a little bit easier to fill your glass tubes. So I keep this with it as well. In order to do a test, we're going to follow along on the quick reference card here. And, you know, I've read through the instructions. There's, you know, a few more tips on the paper instructions, um, but this basically um, tells you what you need to do. But one thing that they do note uh, in here is that when you mix the reagent, well, let me back up a second. So this is really two parts to the test. The first is filling one of these vials with tank water. We put it into the unit and it will do a measurement on it for our baseline reading. Then we will take the tank water out, mix reagent in with tank water and place it back in and you know, it will give us our reading. If you were to follow along with the instructions, um, they tell you, uh, you know, to do just that, fill it with tank water, put it in or get your first reading, take it out, mix the reagent with it and then stick it back in. Uh, if you were to do that and follow the directions exactly, uh, they tell you you need to wait two minutes uh, for the reagent to mix properly. And they also caution uh, to make sure there are no bubbles in here. They tell you to mix it for two minutes thoroughly. Uh, no bubbles, no fingerprints, anything on here. Um, so if you were to do this as they direct, uh, as I mentioned earlier, there is a three minute shutoff. So uh, in the time that you were to take this out, open the packet, dump it into here, mix it for two minutes, uh, clean it off, make sure there's no bubbles, and get it back in there to start the second um, portion of the test. You basically have one minute to spare, which isn't a lot of time to do all of that, uh, to make sure that you're doing it right. They do give you two vials. Uh, so what I've been doing is filling one with the tank water for the first step, and the second one with the reagent water uh, or for the first step and for the second step. There's nothing in the instructions to say you can't use the two different vials, and they do give you two, so I figure that's what it's for. Um, 
if anybody knows differently, you know, please let me know. That's how I've been doing it, and it seems to be uh, working for me. I've collected my sample water, and this is the tank water here, which I'll be using for the first step. And you know, it tells you to make sure there are no bubbles or fingerprints on the vial. So I was very careful to you know, tap it, make sure any bubbles have gone away. Clean this off very good. So that's ready to go. Uh, the second one is the one I'm going to be adding my reagent in. So why don't I go ahead and open this now. They come in these little packets. Which you can just cut open. And you can see there is some powder in there. At the bottom. And I just want to make sure I do this properly. I'm trying to get it on camera, but I want to make sure I don't spill this. And you just dump it in there, and it's pretty much all of the powder. Out of there. I'm going to close this up. And it says to mix this for two minutes, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now, and be back in a second. It's been two minutes, and my reagent is now fully dissolved in the vial, and I've made sure there are no bubbles or fingerprints on the glass. So we're ready to go ahead and do our test. So it tells us the first step is turn on the meter. Let's do that. And when we see add C1 and press blinking, the meter is ready. So we're going to take our unreacted sample and replace the cap. We've done that. Place it in the tester. There we go. Next step is to press the button. When the display shows add C2, press blinking, the meter is zero. So let's go ahead and press that. And just wait. Okay, that step is completed. Uh, now it tells us to put the uh, reacted sample into there. Now on this step, it would have told us to go ahead and mix the solution uh, for two minutes, make sure there's no fingerprints, all that. Yeah, this shuts off in three, so you don't have a whole lot of time. Uh, so now we've got to press and hold the button until the timer is displayed. So let's take that sample out, put this one in, close the lid, press and hold the button. Well, three minutes. Okay, it's going to take three minutes uh, for us to get our reading. So I will just leave this sit there and we'll just wait for that to finish. We're approaching the end of the timer now. So after the three minutes, uh, is expired, we will have our reading. And it looks like we've got 0, 0.0. Wow, I'm still running at 0, 0.00 phosphates. That's um, it's not surprising to me. I've always been testing at zero. Um, and I had been running, I have a lot of macroalgae in my tank. I have, I had GFO running. Um, in there as well a lot of gfo and you know i don't know if too little phosphates is a good thing uh, but i did turn off my gfo reactor last month i took the gfo out and i was going to see if uh, my phosphates were going to rise uh, and it looks like they have not uh, so it appears that the macroalgae that i have in my tank uh, so far is doing the job and I could do without the GFO for now, because that's, you know, was in there to keep my phosphates low. And, you know, even without the GFO running, I'm still getting at 0, 0.00, which is good. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do a, uh, another test with my 25-gallon tank, and we'll see how the readings compare.
These are the samples from my 25 gallon aquarium. The first test was on my 180 gallon aquarium. So I'm gonna go ahead and just run through this quickly and see how the, um, the phosphates are in my smaller tank. All right, this one is winding down, and let's see what we read on the 25 gallon tank. And it looks like I'm also zero phosphates on that tank, and uh, I know some of you are probably thinking, well, wait a minute, how do I know this is working? Um, you know, is it accurate? Uh, well, the only way I can prove that, uh, or disprove it, is I also have uh, an API phosphate kit, which I'll just do a quick test on my 180 gallon tank and let's see how the results compare. In order to compare the results, I have taken a sample of the water from the 180 gallon tank and I'll test it with the API kit. Uh, it's a pretty simple test. Um, here's the instructions. You put six drops of the first reagent, shake the tube, uh, six drops of the second, shake it again. You wait three minutes for the color to develop and then you can test the colors on here. Uh, the difference between using this kit and this one, this one is accurate down to uh, two decimal places. Uh, it's a highly accurate device. Um, whereas this one, you know, the greatest variations you can measure are within 0.25, which is a rather large jump uh, for phosphates. Uh, so we'll see how the colors show up on this camera here, but let's go ahead and do the test. So three minutes have elapsed, and let's go ahead and check the colors. And actually this is showing up pretty well on the camera. Um, as we can see, it looks like it's falling within the uh, zero PPM range, which is good. So this agrees with what the HANA checker was telling me earlier. Uh, so I am in really good shape with phosphates, um, I think. I don't know if they're too low. Um, I do think that you are supposed to have uh, some amount in there, which is why I went ahead and took my GFO offline uh, to see if these phosphates will uh, you know, increase to see what effect you know, my GFO was having. Uh, but so far, uh, you know, I, they haven't risen since I've taken it offline, so I don't know. Um, but anyway, as far as the device goes, I think it's a good device. I do trust the results on it. And um, it's fairly simple to use. Um, you know, once you get the hang of it, you can knock these tests out uh, right away. Um, it is, you know, much more accurate, you know, down to two decimal places um, compared to, you know, say an API kit, which you can only, you know, get readings within 0.25 range. Uh, so all in all, it's a good device. Um, the only negative I would say is the, uh, your battery saving option, which is you know great, you do want that in there, but I think that the uh, two minute or three minute shutoff is a bit short for this device, uh, especially when it's telling you to take your readings and you know wait two minutes in between you know when you mix the one chemical into the glass tube. Uh, so you know you could do what I did is use the two different tubes and you, know, you won't have that issue. But yeah, I'd recommend this device. Uh, it's you know. Definitely one of those things you want to keep on top of, your phosphates, especially if you're having uh, nuisance, nuisance algae problems. And, you know, I think that's um, about covers it for this. So if you guys have any uh, questions, um, any comments, uh, please, you know, leave them below. And if you like the video, you know, give me a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button. Um, and, you know, I'll catch you guys on the next uh, video. Thanks for watching.